You may feel like there's a mass shooting in the U.S. every time you look at the news. The fact is, America has more mass shootings than any other high-income country in the world. And that number is rising. There have been 12 people killed in the city of Birmingham in the last week. Authorities believe the attack was targeted and say a fully automatic weapon was used before the suspects fled the scene by vehicle. Good evening. We're coming on the air with the Alabama manhunt for whoever is behind what police describe as a possible murder for hire plot. Deals and looks like a military style weapon to me. Tell me, does it belong on our domestic streets? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dimani, a Canadian content creator. As a neighbor to America, I often hear concerning news like St. Louis, the most dangerous city in America. Nine gunshots fired down here in this corner. This video shows another man openly carrying a gun in the downtown area as well. And I'm pretty sure I'm speaking for the majority of Canadians. We don't see that much, but we hear a lot. And sometimes I question myself with the media we Canadians receive on our hand. In recent months, there has been numerous reports about rising violence in various cities. For an instance, cities like Chicago, New York City, Detroit, and many more have seen an upstick in gang-related incidents leading to the increased fear among residents. Articles from major news outlet highlight how communities are grappling with the rise in crime and the feeling of insecurity. We need guns because, to be quite frank, it's scary living in my neighborhood. Recent discussions in the media focus on how this issue impacts local economies. The important question, how accurate does the media represent life in America? To gain a deeper understanding, I went to America to speak directly with American citizens and hear out the first-hand experience. We've been driving for the past five hours, and yes, I'm still in Canada. As you can see, you know, I got my little morning coffee. Good morning to all my Canadians. You guys might be saying, Dimani, you never told us where you're going. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to Detroit, Michigan. racial tensions, the birthplace of Motown and the American auto industry is mounting a comeback. $19 billion in debt, unemployment rate of about 14%, about a third of the population has moved out over the last several decades. It's great to see these stories about Detroit making a yes, comeback. And if you spend city. any time there, people are so- Ladies and gentlemen, we just arrived in Detroit, Michigan. Right now, we're currently in downtown Detroit. I'm gonna be honest, I'm a bit nervous, you know, as a Canadian, you know, I'm, I'm just used to back home. Every city has its ups and downs, but here though, it's different. Hey, I don't know, maybe the media is lying. Maybe I'm overreacting, I don't know, but based off what I've seen on, uh, on the media, they make it seem like this place is a war zone. Three men were shot and injured at a BP gas station near West Seven Mile in Grand River. Detroit police released surveillance video after a man is shot and killed while putting gas in his car. Video here shows the suspect pull up to the station, get out of his car, and aim at a man pumping gas. Detroit's criminal gangs have a reputation for street violence. 40 shots fired, just unbelievable in the middle of the day. But anyways, let's go talk to the locals and hear out their perspective on how things really work down here in Detroit. All I see is that Detroit is the most dangerous city in America. Mm. I hear many things about this city. Mm. So, in your opinion, do you think that Detroit, like what makes Detroit the most dangerous city in America? Definitely, it's on the up and up. It looks completely different from what it does or did like two years ago, even just specifically downtown, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think that it's like, you know, you get a lot of people who thinks it's like all violence, all crime. And I don't, I, we definitely do have that, but just as much as anywhere else, like people think you can go up to the suburbs and you can leave your doors unlocked and stuff like that and be fine, but it's really, it's everywhere. So um, Detroit is one of the oldest cities in America. Mm -hmm. We have a very small population. It's a hundred thousand 
thousand. At some point, though, in the 1930s, Detroit had over three million people. We're the largest populated city in America. Um, so for us to go down, and we're also, as far as landmass, we're like one of the largest cities in America. We're larger than New York. Mm -hmm. um, and New York has, you know, like five million people, and we have less than 100,000. Mm -hmm. So we have a very, like, small community. It's a very small city and a big city vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, is this a, would you say this is a city that has love in it? Oh, yeah. Like, Detroit has a... I, I feel like when it comes to, like, especially budding industries, we're also the only UNESCO city in America. Um, so is that... And that's a design company, mm -hmm. um, international design company. So we're one of the only UNESCO certified design companies in America. And, like, the art scene in Detroit is also like art and design especially with the automotive industry is very very big and like that type of industry those type of industries arts culture music can only be like cultivated in a place where there's a large community for that like we all have to work together to make that yeah. succeed uh, all right brother what's it, what's it like to live in Detroit you know oh, tell man. me from what I heard from what I heard apparently this is the most dangerous city in America I'm born in Highland Park, bro. Ah, we worse than Compton. <laughs> Detroit, they ain't lying. Statistically, we got the highest statistic in every statistic. Simply because one thing in Detroit, bro, mm -hmm. we created commercialization through Henry Ford. Mm -hmm. So this dynamics of a hate sensation in Detroit is a lot larger than what we think is the population causing the discrepancies. Not quite. It's more or less inversed on what they call the word arsenal democracy. Right. When Henry Ford accessorized these factories up under the name of a simulation, right, then it delivered to the rest of the world and uh, rest of America commercialization. So this was the richest city in America because the certain dynamics of Henry Ford Lintage to the day still have like these discrepancies. And what I mean by them discrepancies, through arsenal and democracy, you got what is considered communistic influentiality that's holding this arsenal democracy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the words, y'all just taking Google them for real. Hey, it's what I heard. You know? Yeah, real talk. Mm -hmm. The words, I'm saying them over and over yeah. that y'all literally take these words and Google them mm -hmm. and see the bigger picture why Detroit is Detroit mm -hmm. from De La Moth, Antoine Cadillac, mm -hmm. 1701. Mm -hmm. A real founder, mm -hmm. not a, 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 what you call somebody to just come take land from the primitives in a sense. No, nah. it was more or less based in just straight business back then. Yeah, so. I have a quick question. Yeah. yeah. So my question for you is, what's it like to live in Detroit? Would you say there's some places where it's hot and cold here? You didn't get that answer from the previous uh, statement I made. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, guys, you know, don't, don't, don't delete this interview. Y'all take those words I'm I put I'm out there everything. and literally Google by being Highland Park and being that statistic Detroit number one, the murder cap and the whole dap and the whole nap. Yeah, take it from a cat that's from that center city, Highland Park. <laughs> that is in Detroit, worse than Detroit. Yeah, take it from this opinionation that is bigger than what is started that actually you look at the population and you making a statistic behind that. It's not the population that's doing it to Detroit. Mm -hmm. It's the Henry Ford lintage, bro. Yeah. It's just that simple. Well said. Yeah. In, in your own opinion, and I'm just curious, yeah. would you say that the police officers are doing a good job enforcing the law down here? Oh man, DPD, Island Park Department, mm -hmm. uh, 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 Wayne County Sheriffs, doing a real good job. Real good job. Yeah, because you got to understand that police have a harder job than the military. Yeah, because they have to mediate between domestics slash they still got to keep the military agilification. So, you know, it's like you being hard and soft dealing with a situation. A lot of times there's going to be, you know, you're going to be a little too hard or a little too soft, you know? So in between that, yeah, we love police, bro. Real talk. Just walk that chalk. Don't do that knock, you know? Nobody get out there and be on that other E, you know? Yeah, real talk. Take it from me. They call me Quantum Edutain. I'll be rapping about these kind of bigger things, you know? Detroit, I, I guess Detroit is, is dangerous. I'm not going to say that it's not because there's gangs. <clears throat> and, like, my neighborhood that I used to, like, I grew up, it's called the Red Zone. It's off of, like, six mile, like, grassy area. And like growing up, 
like they they will burn down like houses like in the area to kind of like get people to move on like they've been taking over and it was a a group it was like a thing called the uh because this thing called devil's night they burned up all the houses right before halloween mm -hmm. and it and then they had to do they combat combated with angels night so it'd be like community groups trying to get together to stop people from burning up all the houses yep. you know and it is like very small pockets of gang affiliated areas especially like southwest they have like a very large hispanic population it's gangs over there mm -hmm. so it is games, but it's definitely something like people aren't going to come and mess with you. You know, you have to like get jumped in or like you have to be like it's a different from being in the hood and yeah. being street. Like you can live in the hood, but that doesn't mean you're in the street. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah. street violence and that kind of thing is definitely out here. But I think it's like very like small targeted. Yep. Yeah areas that kind of thing yeah but are everything too as far as like even violence like that's that's very old like those are old statistics like it's like we've our crime has gone down so much like we're no longer like the most dangerous city in america like that's like that's very old news like our homicides are down like a hundred percent from like three years ago like it's like a very large statistic of how our homicides have gone down but i can't i i definitely don't recommend people just go in the neighborhoods and just try to like stay off eight miles stay off seven mile don't go to the hood just because you think shit's sweet it's not so, so, so the media basically just criticize the city from what I see, and they just criticize it. So, yeah. it, it's a good, it's a nice city, basically. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a small city, so it's like the thing about it too. You could go down the neighborhood. You could go down, especially like in my neighborhood. I live in a very nice neighborhood. It's called Indian Village, and it's mansions over there, but it's also like duplexes and stuff and it's there you go down one block and it's no houses it's abandoned all no houses just empty it's because we're huge we're vacant it's just not a lot of people so it looks bad and it's literally not it's just we need we don't have the population it's not there but i'm not saying everybody moved to detroit i'm not saying <laughs> you want to suggest someone to move down here or recommend someone i don't want to say that because i don't want I don't want droves of people to buy property and to make stuff super expensive yeah. here because it's already expensive, you know, but yeah, it's just the population. We don't have the population that accommodates for, you know, this upkeep of like other cities, you know, like even the downtown area, you could tell like it's it's a nice downtown area. It's just not a lot of people down here. I come from the suburbs where a lot of people do and a lot of the the attitude out there is that Detroit was unsafe then it's I think if we still get it that Detroit's unsafe now that's not the, the case at all um, I just think that for a lot of years the city took a lot of hits a lot of economic hits like the money just left and with that everybody just assumed crime came in and while there every place has crime it's still I feel like it Detroit absolutely uh gets far worse of a rap than than uh that it deserves uh now it's uh i can't say enough good things about detroit now it is it's clean it's fun it's safe uh, i it's I, again it's all all positives for me so would you say that's heading the right way absolutely yeah absolutely another uh uh, 10, 15 years. I'm, I, I, I really look forward to like what Detroit can get back to. Mm -hmm. You know, like maybe like a hundred years ago to where it, you know it. It Detroit deserves better, and so it. I, I, I really am rooting for it. What's the craziest thing you have ever seen in Detroit? Like, oh, you want to paint? Literally? Yeah. Yo, yo, off the rear, real quick, give me this. <laughs> I'm in front of 36 District Court, y'all. Real talk. I used to hustle in front of the building. This guy asked me for a light for a cigarette. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I give him a light for a cigarette and I turn my back on him. And then when I turn back around, this guy took all his clothes off, bro. But that ain't no big deal, you know what I mean? Yo, being just nude itself, no big deal. That's but okay. the ticket was, yeah, that's just deep anyway. Some to do stuff. it in public in front of 36th District. Yeah. This guy, he had a, a oversized tumor hanging out his rectum. Yeah, y'all take them words and Google because I got to keep it cleaned up for y'all. He had a tumor hanging out his rectum 
that was approximately, say, nine inches in radius, mm -hmm. and it wasn't bleeding, it was just leaking plasma. Mm -hmm. Plus, he was crazy and was trying to rub it up. In layman's term, what I'm mentioning is that he had an actual hemorrhoid that grew a little too large. Now, nah, you know what I mean? I mean, I've seen murders, I didn't seen films, I've seen oh, all that snucks. Yeah. That's really nothing compared to this one guy asking me for a light for a cigarette and had some stuff hanging out his anal. <laughs> <laughs> This is, by the way, beautiful store. Thank you. Beautiful store. Tell me, what's it like, you know, owning a business in downtown Detroit? Oh, well, I'm one of the managers here at Exhibition, so I actually i am here to facilitate and make sure that the store is doing well. We are the top man store selling out of the company right now. Um, it's really great. We're actually able to do everything that we need. We're actually able to bring fashion that you're able to see, like on, um, I would say, the internet and stuff like that. We have them in-house here. We have an in-house um, designer as well. His name is wow. Kaden Fuckham. He has his own line. We have a rival. We have um, Babyface Ray line. Then we carry in a lot of high-end brands and local brands as well so we kind of give back to both sides mm. in each way so we keep a nice high low that's that's fire that's really nice how long have you had the store open uh, for the store has been here for going on for three years now three years. yep we're the only one in detroit and all the rest of our locations uh reside in ohio mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and what was it like when you first time like when you opened it what was it like the first time uh, so i wasn't here oh really i i wasn't here when it first opened i came on um i want to say the last seven months mm -hmm. has been my um my story so since i've come on i've seen um Great changes. We've had plenty of parties. We just came off this weekend and having um, Demetrius come in and do You Matter. Oh, he released it. his hoodies on Thursday. And then that following day, Friday, we had um, my friend Rob that used to work here. He had an art show with all the local artists. They came in and sold their art. And then we had a fashion show on uh, Saturday. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're doing, we're doing great. How long have you been living in Detroit for? I have been living in Detroit all my life. Oh, yeah. I am 33 years old. I've only stayed in um, Chicago for a year. Mm -hmm. So I've been here all my life. I don't know if I told you already, yeah. but I'm Canadian. Yeah. But back home, okay. so whenever like us Canadians, every time we hear about Detroit, it's all about violence. Yeah. Detroit this, Detroit homicide, Detroit, Detroit this, blah, blah, blah. Is it true what the media really says? That's why I came here today to find out firsthand. Well, social What's it like to live in Detroit? Sorry to cut you off. Social media is always going to blow up everything. Um, I feel like every state has the same increment when it comes to violence and stuff like that. It's just on how you perceive it. I want to say Detroit is a really, really good place. I can see from you being here how many days? Have you seen any trouble? Have you got shot at? Has anybody tried to run you over, throw you out? So no, Detroit is really what you make it. It's a really, really great city. It's an upcoming city. So I'm glad to see that everybody is starting to see it from the light because truthfully, Detroit is where everybody get their fashions from. Wait, what's the craziest thing you have ever seen down here? Detroit is crazy, so I've seen some crazy things. But I guess like I can even like this area right here. Yeah. It's called it was called it's called Capitol Park. Mm -hmm. And like 2000, maybe 12, 13, every single one of these buildings on the right side of the park and on the left side of the park was abandoned. Every single one, nothing was in it. This shot where Canal is at, every single one was built was empty. And artists would squat. They all had artists all was squatting in this building. Wow. And Big Sean, you know the rapper, um, his producer Key Wayne, he had, he had a studio in one of these apartments. Yeah. And they would throw parties, raves like crazy. Crazy parties. I would skip school and I would buy weed down here and I would like come and hang out and it would be skaters and it would be skating competitions and, and just like fights. I mean, you could come down here and you could see anything you want to see. You could see somebody selling drugs, you could see somebody OD and like you could see anything. <laughs> like, yeah, basically, anything. everything, huh? Yeah, but obviously, it's changed now, it's different, but. Uh, so the craziest thing I've ever saw, it would have to be 2013 when we had the entire blackout and our city was blacked out for three days. Wow. Yeah. That was the craziest thing because I, I actually got to saw people, you know, loitering and raiding like local gas stations, um, malls. So that probably was probably the craziest time was 2003 when we had the blackout and the <laughs> yuck. If you could change one thing about the city, what would it be? Education. You know, that's another thing, like, 
I think it's like 50% of Detroiters are illiterate. Like our education system is failing. And even last year, the Detroit public, I don't, this, it doesn't get talked about, but the Detroit public schools, like the students of Detroit public schools sued the Detroit public school system. It got turned down and it went to the Supreme Court and got overturned by the Supreme Court for the excess of literacy. They were promised three million dollars, these students. And they I don't know what happened. You know, where's the money for schools and to benefit kids? And it's like they keep getting tax breaks for developments like all like little Caesars. Our arenas used to get we used to get money from the ticket sales for the arenas the concession stands for parking we don't get nothing for them and they get three million dollars in tax breaks it just doesn't make any sense i don't really think that businesses should get tax breaks while we're paying taxes you know it just doesn't make any sense i don't i, I think if that's it anything it's just we shouldn't be incentivizing big corporations to move here and to make money off of people while we're not getting anything in return Free parking for everyone. Free parking? Free parking for everyone. <laughs> Wherever you go, free parking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll say my last question. What's the message you have for someone out there who's trying to start their first, you know, business? It could be opening a shop or anything, just in general. Believe in yourself. You are the number one person that is going to psych yourself out and and putting yourself out there. So if you put yourself out there and you believe in yourself, everybody's going to buy it because somebody's always looking for the next best thing. So always have the confidence in yourself and don't don't stir away from that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the video. I know you guys might be disappointed. You guys are like, but Dimani, you didn't even go to the hood. Blah blah blah. Ex Guys, come on. Do you guys really want me to die? Let's be honest. If I'm going to the hood, I'm going to be looking for trouble. You don't want to go anywhere that, you know, that could start a little altercation, whatever you want to call it. But, and I'm pretty sure you guys want me to keep making videos for you guys. And I'm pretty sure you guys don't want me to die. So, let's just save that for another video. Maybe in the future, I'll go to the hood. But, um, yeah, but Detroit's not bad. It's nice. I like it. But Canada's better. Home is better. Don't get me wrong. The city's nice, but... I love home. You know, Canada, Canada's better. Canada, I love you. But anyways, this is the end of the video. What do you guys think about this little documentary? I know it's different from my other videos that I normally drop, but what do you guys think though? Let me know in the comments. Let me know if you guys wanna see more videos like this. Who knows, I could do something like this on the Canadian side, I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought about this video. But anyways, just like I'll say, if you new to your channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out for any future videos just like this, ladies and gentlemen. Anyways, enough said. I'll see you guys in the next video.